Hi, my name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator, and I just wanna say thank you for being a subscriber to my YouTube channel. Now, I haven't been posting here as much lately, but I have something new that I've been working on that I'm really excited to tell you about. Many of you already know that I teach self-paced Illustrator courses, like The Heart of Illustrator, Recolor Artwork, and my newest course, Art Brush Workflows. Now, all of these courses are part of my new All Access membership. So subscribers can take any course they like and then also attend monthly live Q&A Zoom calls with me. So I'd like to show you an excerpt of one of those sessions. This one is using some of my Halloween art. I'm talking about art brushes and using clipping masks, and I show you some other tips too. So enjoy this tutorial, and if you're interested in knowing more about my All Access membership, please visit my website at lauracoilcreative.com. And thanks for watching. You know, it's not the same in Photoshop. It's just one of these concerns that we have in Illustrator, and it's particular to working with patterns a lot of the time because we repeat those motifs so much. So like in a greeting card like this, you know, this none of this texture is creating the amount of detail that is going to slow Illustrator down because there's really only one copy of each of these sort of textural or detailed things. Um, I pretty much covered what I wanted to show you in this. So I'm going to move on to a really good example here, kind of on the subject that we're talking about, you know, the complexity. Now, if you see these brushes that I have in the panel here, I have art brushes. They're super detailed, as you can see. These are all um, pattern brushes that add a lot of texture to this art. And one of the things I show you in that class is, you know, how to uh, work with some brushes that are like this and simplify them because all of these brushes right here, I bought these and they are incredibly complex. So this, for this art, you can see I'm zooming in and zooming out. I can do all kinds of things with it. It's not going to slow Illustrator down. Um, but if I were to say, I want this skeleton, you know, to be a pattern, uh, that's when it's going to start to get a little hairy. So that's why I try to teach you, you know, how to, how to, how you can, all the different ways that you can edit these brushes. And I show you a lot of those ways in that, in that course. Um, so what I want to do here, just for this example, is to show you how you can incorporate these kinds of brushes, especially art brushes, um, in a design like this, because all of this is achieved using clipping masks. So this is kind of layering the stuff that you learn about brushes along with uh, working with clipping masks. Um, and it's something that we started working with in the heart of Illustrator, but I can show you really how it works in the context of brushes here. So right now I've got my white arrow. I'm looking at, you know, just this one brush stroke that's shading um, this top hat here and I can move it around. You can see that brush stroke. It's got, you know, it's flat on one side and I can see the brush right here. This is a, an edge brush, so it's got a flat edge on one side and a you know textural edge on the other side. This is a pattern brush, um, but you can use you can make edge brushes with um, art brushes too. And you can see I'm moving it around inside of a clipping mask right there. So it's just a a simple path with two anchor points and then a brush applied to it. Here's another one right down here where the brush is shading the edge of that skull. All right. So what I'm going to do is go over here and we'll take this top hat, for example. And this is one of those cases where using um, clipping masks and using my nudging and re-registering is so helpful. So like, let's take the body here, command or control C, command or control F, that's copy, paste in front. And then I'm using my arrow keys to nudge this to the side. And I'm going to get my pen tool out since I'm working with my mouse right now. And let's get, go ahead and paint something here. Let me get a, a color. Okay. Get a brush. I'll use this brush right here. This is an art brush. And then I'll 
create a path. Now, if I was using my Wacom tablet, this would be a much nicer drawing, but um, I have too many things plugged in right now to use that. All right, so here's the brush stroke. Here's where I wanna crop it. Of course, I can make this thicker if I want to, like that, get even more texture out of it, just raising the stroke weight there. Now I'm gonna take the hat shape, which is just a solid shape that I drew with a pen tool. And then command or control C, command or control F, that puts a copy directly in front of the original. And then now I'm gonna bring that to the front using the shortcut uh, command shift right bracket. So now I have a sandwich, basically. I have, you know, the top shape, that shape, or the brush stroke and the background shape. I'll undo, so put this back together. Then you can select all of them and then use the shortcut, or we'll go up here to where this lives in the menu, object, uh, clipping mask, make, command or control seven. So now I have a clipping mask. It's a clip group when I, Look at it up in the upper left corner. It's identified as a clip group. Let me undo where I moved it because now it's out of register. Um, and so from here, you know, I can either use my white arrow to work with this, select it, change the contour of that brush stroke right there. Or I can use my black arrow and double click on this and go into isolation mode, which makes it really easy to just grab, you know, that do a little rotating. Maybe I want to show the end of that stroke there like that, then double click again to get out. So that's one way to use a clipping mask with a brush like that. Um, let's see, Andrea says, does the simplify tool work if you group a whole pattern together or it's, is it best to use element by element? Um, I think it's probably best to use it element by element just so you have the control over it. But, you know, I guess you're going to be making copies of those elements. So, you know, I guess you really have to try it and see. It really probably all depends on the art that you're starting from. So I would say, you know, try it both ways. I always try the thing that hopefully will work the fastest. And if that doesn't work, then I kind of going to go the long way. So I think there's no hard and fast rule about that. It just depends on, on the art. All right, so I'm gonna take the top here. This is a solid oval. It has a gradient applied to it. So it's got, you know, that nice little bit of shading there. Let's look at that in the gradients panel. You can see right there. Um, and I'll bring it to front. Sorry, I kind of have a, came back with a cold um, from my trip. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna select the brush stroke because having that kind of loaded up means I don't have to go back and apply all these things again. So I'm switching to my white arrow, clicking on the brush stroke. Now I can see I have the lilac color, I have the stroke weight, I have the brush there, and then I can come back and let's use the paintbrush tool this time. Draw another one. And this one, uh, maybe I'll just go down to make it smaller. And nudging again, always great. Copy, uh, paste in front, Commander Control C, Commander Control F, and then um, it's in front of that brush stroke. So it just always puts it on the top of the stacking order. So I'm going to go here and Commander Control 7 to make a clipping mask out of it. And then, you know, from here, if I wanted to add transparency to this, maybe lighten it up. Uh, so that it's not as bright on the top of the top hat. Oops, looks like I had didn't have it all grouped together there. Like that. So you can work this way. Um, another way to work, oh, you're welcome, Andrea. I'm glad that helped. Um, so another way to work here is a feature called draw behind and draw, no, draw inside. There's, so there's draw behind, draw inside, um, and draw normal, which is what we normally do. We're normally drawing normal. Now, is anybody using any of these drawing modes? And they're really right here at the bottom of the toolbar. I'd just be interested to know if anybody uses those. Um, I think that they can be helpful, but I don't always 
use them. So it's kind of interesting to hear what other people think, but let's go ahead and just, I'll give you a really simple example here. And there's a reason why I don't use it all the time. And I think it can be kind of confusing and I don't teach it. Okay. Anna says she doesn't. And I know Anna, you've been using illustrator for a while. So, um, that is very interesting for me to know. Um, so here is a shape. All right. And let's say I want to use my brush and I want to have it clip to this shape without having to go through the copying, pasting in front, making a clipping mask kind of thing. So let's get my brush here. Again, I'm just going to grab the one that I want to use there, get my brush tool. And, you know, normally you're just painting on top of that. But what if I come over here and I use the drawing modes? So I'll click once and I can see draw normal, draw behind, draw inside. If I select that rectangle and choose draw inside, you'll see a little dotted line appears here. And so now when I draw, I must have lost my color in the process of selecting that rectangle. But um, as you can see, as I draw here, now those lines are appearing uh, cropped here. And can I move this thing around? Let's see. Yeah, I can move it around. But here's the reason that I don't use this. Um, it's because what's happening here, notice if I grab you know, on the fill of the rectangle. Nothing's happening. I'm not able to select it. But if I click on one of these brush strokes, I can move this. And this is the thing that trips me up. Like when I'm getting to a point where I'm working on an illustration and you can see it's pretty complex. There's a lot of little pieces, a lot of shapes. I mean, every, you know, one of these bones is a separate shape. Um, you know, I just have a, a rhythm of working that where when I can't select this shape because I haven't exactly clicked on the stroke, that really is annoying to me. However, I know people who use this and swear by it. So I don't want to not teach it to you because um, just because I have a hang up with it, um, but it's another way to work here. So the interesting thing is that we got to take a look at this in the layers panel just to see what it is. Um, Let's see. Sue says, I always forget it's there. I don't mind making clipping masks. It does look fun though. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know. It's funny that sometimes it's easy to forget that it's there. And you know, when, when Adobe announced this and I can't remember, it's like in CS5 or CS4, it was a while ago, you know, it's like a big deal. It was a big feature that they added. And then I don't, you know, some people love it. Some people don't. All right. So let's go ahead and look here. Um, I'm going to go ahead, make my panel larger so we can see this. Here's the difference. Um, making a new layer, moving this object to the new layer so that you can see it. All right. Uh, this has got to be bigger so you can really, really see this. Sorry. Panel options. Hopefully that'll, okay. So here we are on layer nine, the new layer I created. Right here is the clip group. This is the draw inside clip group. So as long as I'm in draw inside mode and I see these little dotted lines, then anything I create here is gonna show up cropped. Even if I, you know, you saw, I just made a little mark there. There's another mark out there. It becomes part of this clip group. So as long as the draw inside mode is turned on, everything you create is clipped by that shape that you originally selected. So I have to take, I have to go here and go back to draw normal. And just note that there is a, a keyboard shortcut. Shift D switches the modes and it kind of toggles through all three of these. So if I go back to draw normal now, you know, that's in there, but let's see now there's my shape. Again, if I select here, I can't select it, but if I select on this brushstroke, I can, um, there's the clip group. So it looks like a normal clip group inside of the layers panel, but here's the difference. Um, this right here, the thing that says rectangle has an underline around it. This is the clipping mask. So it's not only the background shape, it's also the clipping mask. So this is the thing that makes 
this different than a regular clipping mask. And so here are all of the, you know, contained strokes in here. Um, if I take you down to this clipping mask here, the one that I created of the top of the top hat, here's the difference. So I have a background shape. Remember I copied, pasted in front the clipping path. And when you make a clipping mask, it automatically turns us into a no fill, no stroke shape. And it's the underlined thing here inside of the clip group. That's the indication in the layers panel that this is the clipping shape. So that's just a difference there. In a regular clipping mask, you have, you know, your background shape, which can be, you know, any size. And you have the shape here that's actually doing the clipping. Um, if we go back to here, um, there's the rectangle, which is the background and the clipping mask. So that's why I think it is a little bit trickier to use these, but it's another way to work. So um, does anybody have any questions about using clipping masks in this way um, for sort of clipping your brush art work and using it almost like, you know, shading for illustrator shapes here? Let me know if you do. I have another example of it here. Um, in this art here, I used it, you know, in this castle. So I took the castle shape. I did some brush strokes and um, made a clipping mask out of it, which I think I have over here. So um, there, in this case, I actually, I instead of making you know, the background, like the top hat and the brushstroke all into a clip group. In this case, I just had like a, you know, an extra copy of the shape and I used it to clip it. So now I can kind of align it right there. So it's another approach to it like that. Um, so that's how I've used them in, in this case. Um, all right, so I'm gonna move on to another file here before we wrap up. So what this is, is a design that I'm working on right now. So to me, you know, this is kind of a, at the comp stage. Uh, at some point, a little for when I get a little further with this, I I could show it to the client. Right now, she doesn't have hands. I would never show a client it at this stage. But there's a lot here that I could show a client that's not finished or not detailed. Um, so let's see, I have, let me go ahead and just show you this. Um, also, I'm not naming my layers. So I don't know what any of these things are because I'm just, it's a work in progress. So I have a pencil sketch here and I have different backgrounds that I've been trying out. Let's see, here's my figure, which I drew with the pen tool. Um, there's the broom. I'll turn off the sketch. Um, and then here's the, the current background that I'm working with. Um, so one, you know, at this point, I'm still have a long way to go here. And, you know, like I'm, her neck is just an oval or her glasses are just ovals or kind of like indications to see where this, and this is an indication here, you know, which is pretty um, rough. But I was trying to think of how could I use art brushes for uh, the broom to make it, you know, kind of fun looking. And so here are some ideas, you know, that I might play around with. And this is on the theme of, you know, making a brush customized to the artwork that you're working on. So like here, you know, I, there are, if you've ever looked inside of the brushes panel, there are um, scroll pen brushes here. In fact, the, we use these in the butterfly exercise in um, the heart of Illustrator. And when we're working with clipping masks, actually. And it's here, if we go into, I think it's artistic, artistic scroll pen. You can find all of these art brushes here that have these repeating shapes, which are really cool, but I don't like the angles here and I didn't like the angles here. So I thought, okay, well, I'll try to create one like this. So I've just created some lines there. And in this case, I applied a width profile, you know, 
just to have, just, just to kind of make it quick so I can figure out if this might work or not. So I'm selecting that and I'm gonna click plus to create a brush. I'm gonna click art brush, click okay. I like this direction, you know, top to bottom like that. There's the direction arrow. So that means when I paint, you know, I'm gonna have it going in this direction. I'm gonna leave uh, stretch to fit stroke length, change the colorization method to tints and click okay. And then maybe I'll choose a different color here. I didn't mean to color the brush art, but you get the point. And it looks like I still have that um, with profile. So let me change it to just, you know, the uniform basic default and then go back to painting here. So I could say, okay, well, you know, I don't love the way that looks, um, but, you know, maybe I need to experiment with the color there or whatever but I know that's not going to work for this. So um, I'll try something else because I don't like how pointy these are. And that's something that actually, you know, I've heard from art directors before. They're like, don't put those like super pointy details in here. It just like makes things look kind of, I don't know, um, harsh. Uh, so, okay. So here I am trying to think of a way to make it more blunt. So I come in here with my arrow tool, I mean, sorry, my pen tool, and I'm making like a, this kind of a shape here. Let me drag this out. Okay, and then I want to sort of complete the other side. So I'm gonna use uh, the rotate tool for this or the mirror tool, let's see. Oh, that's the mirror tool. I just know this by the shortcuts, but here it is right here. Reflect tool is what it's called. Um, I use the shortcut O. So if I tap O on my keyboard and then I just like to place, you know, my first, your first click is what places the reflection point. So I'm just going to place it down here. And then your second click and drag is going to start reflecting it. And then when you hold the option or alt key, you can just kind of snap it. You can kind of drag it and then uh, option alt um, is making a copy of it. And then if you hold the shift key, it's a lot. I know uh, you can snap it into place like that. And then I kind of go, okay, well, that was a little crooked. So I'm going to move them over. And I do this a lot because I just want to draw half of an object because I want it to be symmetrical. I want it to be even on both sides. So I'll do kind of a, just a quick and dirty rather than drawing this triangle like that, when I can't really tell, you know, whether it's the same, I would rather just go here, holding the shift key. Also, I'm making it thicker than it needs to be because I can, I know I can always squeeze it up. Um, I could have used my guides there to make this flat on the top, but That'll be good enough for now. So I'll just walk you through the steps again. So uh, reflect tool, tap O, click where you want to place the point, drag to start the reflection, hold option alt to make it a copy and shift snaps it to that 45 or 90 degree increment there. If you want these to be whole, you know, instead of two pieces of a triangle, Shift M is the shape builder tool. And then you just drag over it like that. Now what I have is a solid shape rather than like that. And then squinch it up. Looks like I lost a little bit there from the, the um, shape builder tool. Sometimes I cannot remember what I'm trying to say. And then I'm just option dragging like that. And then if I'm like, huh, I don't know if I, maybe I do want to stretch this out. So anyway, this is just kind of how I would play with it and see if I can create something that works. Maybe I want one of these to be longer like that. Okay. So now I've been playing with this. I definitely, since I'm making a brush, I have to remember in this file, I'm in RGB. So I need this to be RGB black. 
just to confirm that I'm switching to my RGB sliders. I see that's zero, zero, zero. So I know this is RGB black. And that means that I can use that colorization method um, when I create this brush. I can use the tints method. So I'm gonna hold, select that, click the plus sign, choose arc brush, click okay. Okay, so now I've got that funky shape. Change this to tints. The direction is up, up and down like that. That's good, click okay. All right, now let's see. Um, I need a color here. And I need to turn this to none. So I have stroke color, no fill color, and just paint with this brush. You know, so maybe this brush will be the brush that I need. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to play around with this some more and think and see. So I'll change that. But you get the idea. Basically, um, you know, this is about making things that are customized to your artwork and sort of figuring out, you know, which way it's going to work. So I've got to work on that. I'm, I haven't found, I haven't found my brush yet, but I'm going to work on it. Um, all right. So we have like a few minutes left. Does anybody else have a question? Um, also let me know. I mean, let me know what you think of this. Cause I'm not sure about the car. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. Um, I'm trying to make this witch, uh, based on, you know, like what I saw in London, like I saw so many people walking around with these huge boots, um, that had really thick soles and they were white, which is so crazy. Like you normally you used to see everybody wearing black boots. And I think most people are, but like there's fashiony people wearing white thick soled boots. And, um, you know, I just wanted this, uh, witch to have, you know, a lot of attitude and a lot of swagger. <laughs> I saw a lot of that there. Um, let's see. Thank you, Anna. Um, Sue says just a comment. I keep forgetting about the shape builder tool and it's so much faster than going into the pathfinder and uniting. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? It's fast Sue when you just memorize that shortcut, it's, um, it's shift M and the way I memorized it is, and it's one of those, you just got to commit to, to memorizing it. Cause it's so useful. It's shift M because M is the shortcut for the shape, the rectangle tool. So if I tap M on my keyboard, I have a rectangle. So if I go shift M, I have the shape builder tool. So once you get that under your uh, fingers, it's, you know, you're just shape building all over the place. And I totally agree with you. It's faster in a lot of situations than going into the Pathfinder panel. So um, I'm glad you, I'm glad you added that comment in there. Um, so anyway, I'll, I'll let you know how I do with my witch. This is my work in progress here. Uh, but anyway, I hope you guys are having fun using Illustrator and, you know, maybe doing some Halloween art. I would love it if you would post it in the forum. It would be so cool to see what people are working on. And of course, you know, uh, send me a question, send me a file, and I, I would be happy uh, to show you, you know, how to tweak it and do what you need to do with it. Um, and a lot of the times, like with Andrea's file today, it was like super useful for all of us to see, you know, just something in context like that, which is great. Um, Andrea says, I like her too modern a nod to William Morris in your coat. Oh yeah. Nice. Um, notice there. Uh, yeah, actually I saw a coat kind of like this at the VNA, um, which made me think of that. And, you know, by the way, like just this is like you can see there's a seam in this pattern here but i just wanted to comp this up really quickly so what you do here is you know take something like that um and i have this pattern here i just want to show you this really quickly i'm not sure why i'm not seeing the 
the pattern right now. But, you know, just, just in the process of working, you're kind of just tr trying to figure some stuff out. I have this um, Bridgerton library where I put just a bunch of like fancy things. Let's see. This is place copy. This is from a Dover book. I don't know if you guys ever use those, those clip art books. Um, I used capture to take a picture of it with my phone black and white pattern like that. And I could use this with a clipping mask. Um, but because I was working with this coat and just trying to find something really quick, what I did was I gave this a color, whatever. I drag it straight on into the swatches panel and that automatically makes a pattern. It's not a good pattern. It's not seamless. If I apply it here. You can see there's seams in there, but for my purposes, it doesn't matter because what I'm trying to do is come in here and just see what, you know, this coat or these pants would look like with a pattern applied to it. So there's the shape. Um, I'm going in the appearance panel because the appearance panel allows me to stack up fills. So I'm going to add a second fill and then I'm going back into my uh, swatches panel, grabbing that and putting it on the pants there. And then, you know, I can resize this really easily. Um, obviously not gonna, not gonna put these pants on her, but you know, it's just a great kind of a quick way to see, you know, whether that works. And here's the, the thing that I had showed you um, before, which can help in a situation like this. So let's say I'm comping this up and I just wanna see, you know, what it's gonna look like if I throw a pattern in here. Um, I'm going to select that fill in the appearance panel, that pattern fill that I just applied. I'm going to go to the FX, distort and transform, and then transform. And now I have the transform effect. I'm going to uncheck transform objects because I don't want to transform that pant leg. I want to transform just the pattern inside. And from here, I can, you know, change the angle of it, change what part of the pattern. So yeah, I want that leaf there. And I want, you know, I'm using the move slider to just move it up so I can orient it exactly as I want it. I can just use these horizontal and vertical. I hate that they're separate. There's no lock there, but, you know, I can change the size of it here. Click OK. And, you know, I've, I've done this. But because it's a, an effect and the appearance panel can always come back and open this up and tweak it some more. Because as you know, when you're working on an illustration, you, ha you have a lot of tweaking <laughs> to do to make everything work just right. So that's another tip for you. All right. Um, let's see. Andrew says, what te technique would could you use to make them look like the fabric is moving and not so flat? For that, like if I really had to bend it, in this case, you know, it's kind of my style to have things flat, uh, but you could use an envelope warp to do that. Um, and when you do an envelope warp, um, you could also use puppet warp too. Um, object, let's see, envelope distort, make with warp. Okay, so you can see automatically how that's starting to warp it and you have some control over it here. Um, you have that as a, an option. Um, I don't have my toolbar out for the puppet warp tool. Let's see. You're gonna let me up, up it. Okay, I'm gonna have to use this discover here, puppet, puppet warp tool. All right, so now it appears in my simple, simple toolbar here. Oh, and we use the puppet warp tool, by the way, in the brushes class. And the reason is because like, you know, you have a crooked brush and you need to straighten it out or, you know, whatever, you, you created a line, a mark, you know, in Fresco, you're bringing in an illustrator and you just need to straighten it out before you create a brush out of it. That's what the puppet warp tool is great for. So you could do that, you know, it's vector art. So you can warp it with the puppet warp tool. All right. Uh, Sue says, is there an easy way to make that art into a seamless pattern or would it require reconstructing it? Oh, uh, Sue, 
I wish, I wish it were easy, but I don't think this would be easy to do. Um, so, you know, you're going to have to, uh, but the, the thing that I would probably do is look for whatever motifs I can cut out of there. Right. Um, and then bring it into pattern editing mode or use the repeats feature. You know, I would just basically, um, try to maybe reverse it or something like that. So I could get whatever full motifs I could get and just sort of start over with the pattern. That might be the fastest way. He says, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Patterns. That's how they, that's how they go. But anyway, it's a great question. And yeah, I would, I would do a workaround, like, like just cutting parts of it out and making a new pattern. Um, all right. Yeah. I can't illustrate or read our minds yet. You know, it's getting closer to the point, uh, with all of the AI stuff that they're adding, but they're not there yet. Unfortunately, I really wish they would improve our pattern features for sure. Um, all right. So that's it for now. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today. This was a lot of fun and, you know, I'm always open to your ideas or questions or anything like that about the next one. I haven't thought about what we're going to do, but I've got ideas. So, you know, it's going to be fun. All right. And I hope to see you around in the, in the community as well. All right, you guys, it's been really fun and I got to stop sharing so I can wave at you. All right. Thanks a lot. See you later.